the 2021 Lane Flix October Horror Fest. What's going on, guys? It's Kirk uh, from Lane Flix Media. I have Tommy J here with me. How you doing, Tommy? You look pretty good. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Uh, today we're going to be starting the October Lane Flix Horror Fest 2021. Uh, we're kicking it off with The Lords of Salem, a 2013 psychological horror film directed by Rob Zombie and starring his wife, Sherry Moon Zombie. Just a little bit of background before we get into the plot. Rob Zombie, if you're not super familiar with him, he's a rock guy who um, has a band. He's had, He had a band for like 20-something years, and then he went on on his own, and he's been his own act for a while now. Um, and he's been doing movies now for about 20 years, I would say. Okay. Um, and yeah, so he typically does horror stuff, and he makes rock music. Tommy, you and I have watched this, I think, at least two other times. I, I was in this day. Um... What is your, like, opinion of this movie before we get into it? It's... Like, if, if Joe Schmo was like, Hey, I heard this movie, The Lord of Salem. Like, how do you... It definitely has, like, a back-in-the-day horror movie film. Not, like, a new age. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. It's more of a back-in-the-day. Like, like, a vintage feel. Yeah, like a vintage feel to it. Definitely. I think most of his stuff does to some extent because he usually uses film. And just the style, too. Like, he... Especially the... We just finished watching the movie, the ending sequence. Uh, yeah. It's very, like, 70s trip movie yes. kind of, like, weird stuff, so... You mean the ending, like, the credits, or just, like, before... No, like, yeah, like, the uh, the whole possession sequence. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, like, in the, the, whatever... And, like, the... The, the conception. Ending. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, all that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I dig this movie a lot. I think it's a really good movie to just, like, get you in the fall mood, uh, especially exactly. especially a creepy fall movie. It's really good for that. It's not like the best movie ever, but it's enjoyable and it'll definitely creep you out. I feel like, Big time. Um, especially if you're like really prone to visuals. Like I was this movie say, has visually, yeah. it's an awesome movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, visually, it's freaking awesome. So we open with uh, Sherry Moon Zombie's character in a car, listening to just kind of ambient radio. We don't really need to hear what's going on, but uh, yeah, we basically are just kind of introduced to her in a very nonchalant way. Uh, and then we cut to a goat among a cloud of smoke, and then we see the uh, the John Hawthorne clip where he's sitting writing, uh, like, uh, he's writing his letters about hunting witches and stuff. It just establishes him as a witch, devil worshiper, hunter. Yeah, guy. the witch hunter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he said he kind of looked like Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Like, just with, like looking at him, like, <laughs> off the cuff. Yeah, he kind of looks like... Uh, like a History Channel guy. Like, like a founding father type, yeah, yeah. type guy. Yeah, so... Uh, so then, yeah, so then we get the uh, witch ritual, and we get a bunch of naked women dancing of all ages of and all sizes. Ages, yeah. And we get the title card, the Lords of Salem. And it, it's kind of a freeze frame, uh, and he does freeze frames a lot in his movies, but it's a freeze frame of the goat we saw. So it's got this satanic feel to it already. Like, yeah, it, it just establishes that visual. And yeah, the whole like opening sequence, I always feel so dirty watching that. Like, and all yeah, the, like it just makes you feel like wrong for sitting there watching it for some reason. And, and it makes sense because it's a it's this like evil ritual. But yeah, it's really evil. It's just this weird feeling. And get. and I feel like besides being from the south, you know, we we respect our elders a lot. And just seeing old <laughs> old ladies dancing naked, man, that goes against <laughs> our fabric, like yeah. literally. And then yeah, so this this movie plays along with the. My wife's butt is out of this world, uh, Rob Zombie. I forgot we were going hard on that. Yeah, oh yeah, no. Well, it's actually kind of funny, because like, I came up with that whenever I saw the her butt and then like the moon thing. Her, her ass is out of this world! Out of this world! Yeah, I mean, it's like, Jesus, Rob. Like, Hey, he adores his wife. Man. Hey, man, yeah, I mean, he's excited about his wife, that's cool. Yeah. But, so yeah, you just kind of get a sense of her domestic life and how she kind of lives alone in this apartment. Yeah, she's kind um, of like a go with the flow type chick and this is yeah 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 she's very like rocker chill chick kind of vibe yeah it's like rocker slash hippie it's yeah for sure um and then you pointed out it was really funny that like as soon as she gets back and like the landlady's there 
she's all like acting innocent, and you're like, nah, nah, nah. Oh yeah, yeah. Just because I've seen the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just funny, like, because you, you already knew what was up. Like, she was acting all chill. You were like, nah, get yeah, that out of here. Like, I'm trying to call her out on her shit. Right. <laughs> it's really she, funny. She starts murdering more people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she asks about like the room five tenant. Ah, uh, yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? I, I haven't signed anybody to that room. <laughs> And you and I are just both like geez. the most evil, most like, yeah. evil landlord ever. Yeah, like, yeah, like gaslighting the shit out of her. But um, he even goes and checks the room, and you know, mm-hmm. all the, like, like she's actually trying to look for something. Yeah, that's another thing. Is like, why would she just do that? Yeah, like you know what I mean. It, it, there's just little things in it where it's like, okay, Rob Zombie, like you're trying too hard to establish that they're like, like you kind of play your hand when you like over. He's like, did you guys get this one? He's like, sure he's like, they're it? definitely not bad guys, yeah. guys. Yeah. It's like, okay, all right, like we, like they're obviously they're fucking all, witches. Something's like, up. With yeah, them, yeah, yeah, something's up. <clears throat> then um, let's see. Oh yeah, so then we get to the radio show, and you just gotta get this sense of uh, Herman, who's uh, Ken Forey from, like I said, Dawn of the Dead. He was in From Beyond. Uh, he was in Devil's Rejects. He's been in a few Rob Zombie things, and then. Um, uh, Whitey. Whitey. I remember yeah. his his name was like I don't know, he had a name too, but <laughs> just called him Whitey. Whitey's, yeah, Whitey's called, what you remember. Yeah. Like that's his nickname. So yeah, they they just get have this very like laid back feel to their podcast and they like chill, um and they're all like hippies, but they're yeah. all like you can tell they're all really good friends and like yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing. The chemistry established between the three of them is like really good. I yeah, yeah. They, it would have been nice to have more of that, yeah. and then maybe like the three of them have to somehow deal with yeah, the conclusion of the cool. movie. That would be yeah, a little bit. But I mean, at the end, I guess it was trying to be like more feminist and like more because it is about like using a woman as a vessel. As a vessel. So it's like yeah, trying to let her be like be empowered and like. A fair fight, like on her own terms, kind of thing. Yeah, we get, we just get a sense of like how they all go along together, how they do their radio show, and like the whole vibe they have, which is nice. It's a really cool. Like, I honestly wish the radio show was real. Like, yeah, yeah, I would, would listen. I would listen. I would definitely listen because they played some bangers. Too, yeah, and they like, have cool bands on there. Like, yeah, they yeah. had good. Like, Who was the first guest? Was like the German. Uh, oh yeah, the guy from. Uh, it was like smite your mother yeah. or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Some like crazy shit. Like, what did he say? We're he was the... he was like he was like God is swine and we work yeah, for the butcher. God's the unholy swine. <laughs> yeah, God's the unholy Jeez. swine and we work for the butcher. What the fuck kind of fifth grade <laughs> shit is this, bro? Like, I, I saw that written in a bathroom stall at yeah, like, like, elementary like, school, dude. Like, that the edgy kids in middle school, right? Like, it's like Rob was up. You gotta step this shit up, man. But uh. But it's fine. Like, it works. It, yeah, it works with the movie. It really does. But then, uh, oh yeah, so then uh, Whitey and Heidi, which is funny that that rhymes, they're chilling at Heidi's apartment, and uh, Whitey puts the record on that they get uh, when they're leaving the radio station. Mm-hmm. The receptionist, like, gives Heidi, she's like, oh, this came in for you. She gives Heidi this weird box with a strange symbol on it. And then, yeah, so they take it, and back at, like I said, at the apartment, um, Whitey plays the record, and this is the first time we hear, like, the Lords of Salem music. Yes. And it puts Heidi in this weird, like, trance. Um, and then this is where she sees the vision of the older attempt to do, like, the Satan baby thing. The failed But then, it was, yeah, it's just, like, born like a regular kid. But then it's, like, crazy how aggressive the lead witch gets with, like, sp- uh, Morgan. She, like, gets with, like, spitting. Oh, she, yeah. She, like, spits on it so much, she, like... Damn, like, I, I mean, it's obviously a fake baby, too, but, like... Well, same. yeah, 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 that, yeah, it is a fake baby, but... Um, so it's just creepy, like... And remember the part got me to where she, like, the baby's, like, ripped out of the stomach, and she, like, literally licks the... Oh, yeah, Jay had to look the, away, yeah, that was yeah, pretty... That I, was pretty it was pretty gross. After watching the movie a couple of times, like, I don't know how I keep forgetting about that. Well, and even, but, like... Oh, my God. Even though it is a fake baby, like, it's just the thought of no, it. No, it's, it's still, like, yeah. All the... Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not even gonna... But yeah, the Morgan, the the lead witch lady, she like licks the baby to like taste it and see if it. see if it li- because I guess it doesn't look right. It's supposed to look like a crab monster. Okay, but it's so like she sees it as normal, so she's like, let me taste it and make sure it's good. It wasn't so, vile enough. Yeah, it was too. It, right. it was too good. And then yeah, this is where Tommy said that uh, 
Cherry's uh, dreads go hard. You're like, her dreads oh, go yeah, pretty yeah. hard. I do right? love her. I, and I have dreads myself, so I, I'm right. sort of certified in that opinion. Yeah, yeah, true, true. If anyone's going to comment on dreads, hey. it's going to be you, yeah. This is where Heidi goes to her, like, uh, addiction meeting. Uh, they yeah. They just kind of... So it, it gets a little <laughs> bit slower with her character, a little bit of character development. And you kind of get a feel of like, okay, she, she's got a broken past. She's trying to be a better person. She's trying to move on. I don't think she ever says anything about herself, though, does she? Like, the guy just kind of, okay. The guy just yeah, like, she's more receptive than anything. Than anything. So then Bruce Dennison, who I told you was the guy from X-Men, the senator guy. Or I think Bruce Davison. I put Dennison. I think it's Bruce Davison uh, from the X-Men movies. He is in this movie and he's just kind of a regular guy. He's like mildly interested in witches and stuff. And, um, it's just funny. They have him on the radio show and he's kind of just a normal guy. And they're like these weird hippie people. And so <laughs> yeah. they just keep making all these weird jokes and he's like, Oh, okay. Doesn't, doesn't like, know what's going on. Yeah. Like he's just like, yeah, like average guy. And yeah, it's pretty funny. So then, yeah, we observed here. So in the return of Twin Peaks, uh, there's a scene in part eight where uh, Woodsman is doing this whole like monologue thing. Tommy J said that uh, last time we said the same thing that there's a scene in this that's like, I guess the return is like this because this came out before that. But uh, uh, you know what I mean? Okay. But uh, but I mean I think it's kind of it's a thing in movies where there's this broadcast you know a signal or oh, so that it's happened before. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's like connected. Somehow. People are lulled by it okay. somehow. Yeah, so. Um, it's just an interesting, like, idea that's shared, and, like I said, like, Rob Zombie's definitely highly influenced by that. I think that might call back to when, like, the Red Scare was going on, right? Like, wasn't there some Probably, well, yeah, just because on a, on a certain level, like, they were, they were blinding people to the truth, and, like, oh, okay. just be scared of the communists. Yeah, the communists. And, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. so then, yeah, the author guy, um, goes home. Oh, yeah, sorry, before we go there. Ken Forey, uh, the older guy, Herman, I think is his name? Yeah, Herman. Is that right? And I think the, yeah. The younger guy's I think Whitey. Whitey's name might be, like, Herm or some something like that. Okay. They're listening to the Lords of Salem, uh, and then they play the record on the radio, and then uh, Bruce Davison, the author guy, I think his name's Francis, he goes home and he talks... Uh, Talks the whole incident over with his wife and talking to her about, like, the Lords of Salem. Kind of, like, the beginning of him investigating. Right. Oh, yeah. Then the landlady invites uh, Heidi to join her and her friends for a drink. And then uh, they make this, like, another dead soldier joke, which I was just like, wow. Yeah. That's, that's tasteless as shit. It was, like, dry as fuck. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That yeah, was, it really was, like, weird. so weird because it was kind of out of the blue, but it also was just, like, kind of a red flag. It's like, whoa, okay, yeah. dark sense of humor. Like Very dark, especially for some little old ladies. Like. Yeah, exactly. Here we got Dee Wallace, who's the mom from E.T., Critters, Cujo, and the Frighteners, among other things. Um, and she's one of the three uh, witches here that... You don't know they're witches right off the bat, but... Pretty, it, it's like you don't know you their get witches. A vibe. Um, the the witch that works at the apartment or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't lie. When I first watched the movie, I couldn't tell that she was a witch. But like, man, when all three of them are together, it's like instantly you know. You kind of get yeah. You get a vibe. Yeah. You get this feeling that like some, even if they're not witches, there's something. There's wrong. something going on. Yeah. So then, um, it's kind of funny. The one I can't remember if her name. I want to say it's Mia, but I feel like that's wrong. But the one who's always drunk. Ah, uh, yeah. She's like, give the me red a hand. hand. And then D. Wallace, like, gives, he get, she gives the other lady this look like, oh shit. Yeah. So then, yeah, she reads Heidi's poem, uh, Sherry Moon Zombie's character, and then the other two women get nervous. So then, um, just after the fact, this is something I pointed out that Tommy, I think, disagrees a little bit with me on, but I was, um, just thinking, like, why did the sisters, after Heidi leaves, like, why do they talk so, like... Ah, uh, yeah. Why do they yeah. talk so sensitively about what's going on? <laughs> and they, and really, like, I think it's just an obvious way to, like, not let the audience on yeah. to what's going on. But it's kind of lazy because it's like the characters wouldn't really talk like that if the victim was gone. If they were like, gone. The, you know what I mean? They'd be like, more open and more direct about yeah, what's like going they wouldn't, on. Yeah, like, they wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't be beating around the bush about, yeah, everything. So, I don't know. That was just my take on it. Um... Tommy thought that it, it was fine, so maybe 
I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just like a nitpicking. I don't know. <laughs> so then Heidi is lulled into room five, and this is the neon cross scene. Okay. So yeah, this is actually like one of the coolest visuals in the movie, in my opinion. Um, there's a couple of really cool shots here. There's one where you're inside room five, you're looking out. And on the reflection of the door that's like open on open like into the inside, on the reflection of the door, there's like this red light. It just looks really cool because you see Heidi like way down the hallway coming at you. But then, um, yeah, in the room, it's all blacked out, and then there's this pink neon cross on the wall. This like vibrating. Yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah, like vibrating, like pulsating Floating, almost. Yeah. But but and then like you brought up that it's like why isn't it upside down or why why is it just a cross? Yeah, and why is it? And and it's weird because they use other symbols throughout the movie, so you would think it's something more like, like yeah, shit. satanic. Yeah, shit. yeah like so you yeah. think it would just be more like that and not just like ah, oh, this is Jesus symbol. We're gonna take this and make it red. Now it's evil. It's but. red. Like yeah, I don't know. But it is nice, like, uh, we get the Satan Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, that, that's <laughs> The Satan Bigfoot is fucking That awesome. part is actually cool. Like, it, it, it's so, like, tacky that it's creepy. No, yeah. Because it is tacky, but then at a certain point, you're like, this is creepy. This is like, creepy, yeah. Like, I know that's a guy in a suit, but this is still creepy. Like, funny, someone funny. someone thought this up. One of those know, things like, where, like, you're walking towards it, it's like, oh, this isn't that bad, and you get up close, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, you get like, a little closer, you're like, closer, okay, never like, mind, this is creepy. Let me back up a little bit. Yeah. Then... Oh, yeah, so then the lead witch appears to Heidi uh, after the fact, after she's got her little episode. She's walking back in the hallway, and Morgan, I keep forgetting her name, Morgan, the lead witch from the past, <clears throat> and this is where she says, bleed us a king. Yeah, bleed us a king. In this whole, like, creepy sequence. Um, and then, oh, yeah, so then this is where uh, Heidi goes to a church, Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, like we have this whole uh, priest blowjob fake out scene. Yeah. And it's very, uh, <laughs> it's very strange. Uh, very off putting. Yeah. But then it's crazy because it ends up being a dream. Yeah, so you're yeah. like, okay, the priest isn't terrible. That's good, I guess. I guess. But, like, she still had this crazy dream. <laughs> and then this is, yeah, she's sitting outside the church, and then we get the ash face guy walking the goat. And that's like one of my favorite visuals in the whole movie. I just love that shot. Uh, and this is creepy that I, I hadn't noticed ever that he actually whispers, we've been waiting for you. Yeah. Like to oh, her, you, you but it's notice. like, I didn't notice it before. before. I guess, yeah, I don't know, but. It is it, like a whisper. It's not like. It reminded a, me of the black dog runs yeah. at night in the uh, fire walk with me. So yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, this is pretty funny. We talked about this in the middle of the movie. Uh, Tommy and I, and I'm sure the average person, agrees that the Salem witch trials have pretty much been exposed as like a big fraud, like the big, like the Red Scare. <laughs> yeah, like like the the red scare. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty horrible. It is. It is terrible what happened. But uh, it's funny that Rob Zombie is like fuck history, like forget everything that we actually know about witch trials. It is real. They were witches. Yeah, they and, were like, witches. They were actually... Should, it's yeah. cool that he, like, bought into this schlocky, like, silly idea that, you know, they used in horror movies in, like, the 60s and 70s. So it's just, I don't know, it's kind of cool that he can, he can, like, suspend his disbelief as a writer. Yeah, yeah, just and for... And just make, like, a fantasy horror movie. It's cool. Big time. Just so um, crazy to think about. Actually, the Earth is the center of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. did you just say to me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Copernicus. Did you eat the mushrooms today? But uh, so then yeah, this is pretty much like the classic burn her scene, like yeah, you know, burn the witches. Yeah, and John Hawthorne, <laughs> the guy they've been talking about, sitting there and. Just, like, watching them burn. And they have them lined up as if, like, you know, the whole Jesus and the... What is it, two thieves? Yeah, Jesus Jesus, Jesus and... I think it's a thief and a murderer. Okay. If, I, I want to say, it could be two thieves, I don't remember. I, I, I was going to say... The whole thing is one of them... The whole, like, thing in the Bible is, like, one of them repents and then one of them doesn't. And so it's just, like, a lesson, even at, like, the crucifix of... Yeah. So yeah, back at the radio station, um, the song makes Heidi sick again, the Lords of yeah. Salem song. Well, what, what's the vision that she has, like, the second time they play it? 
Because doesn't she have another vision? Uh, another vision? If she gets that? flashes, I don't remember what it is specifically though. I think it's just more like witch stuff. Like I think it's that, like the burn her scene, like cut into that. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And then the two other guys uh, <laughs> assume that Heidi's back on her drugs. Yeah. So it kind of sucks. Um, She's and back then on junk. Francis, the author guy, goes to the author of the witch book that he read that had the phrase Lords of Salem. And then uh, this is a really good, this is like another standout thing from this movie. It has a really good exposition. Uh, it's really atypical because the person in this movie explaining the exposition doesn't really believe what he's saying. Yeah, he like he's read the he's even read the diary. Like and yeah, he's like it's it's so actually, it's ironic. It, yeah. yeah, it's like terribly ironic because it's like we know it's not real. We would be acting like this guy, yeah. and that's what makes it relatable. But then the fact that he's like us means that we're wrong. And in the logic of this movie, you know, we're wrong about mm-hmm. witches. Like, they're here, like, they're they're alive and well kind of thing. So. Plot twist, Rob Zombie actually believes in witches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, um, so then, yeah, Whitey and Heidi, again, it's funny that it rhymes. They're at uh, Whitey's apartment, and then this is where Heidi starts, uh, like, coughing <clears throat> up blood. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we get this, like, really creepy montage of these like ash face nurses that come in and then we get this uh audio from like an old gospel thing or something that's talking about like hell. the last days of when jesus comes yeah and it's like creepy as like, hell like reading revelations like yeah because stuff. he talks about like the worm and yeah, shit and it's yeah. like ew, it's creepy that's one thing I gotta say. The little like gospel cutouts or whatever you want to call them, they are genuinely creepy. Like, oh yeah, he was ex- like explaining the how audio he... is like yeah, that yeah, is that's like... something else, especially with the visuals. Like, yes, he, he's really good at, it, and I think it's because he's probably made so many music videos. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like the cool thing about Rob Zombie is he his <clears throat> film school he always says was his music videos. Like when okay. he made music videos, so like that's why a lot of his movies have that feel to them. Because there's that one montage of straight up of music. Yeah 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 the whole. 70s yeah. trip thing is like yeah just straight music video stuff but so I think he's really good when he has other like sampling that he applies to visuals he's like fantastic at that because that's like what music videos are right. essentially so. yeah oh yeah in her bathroom there's that really cool like I don't want to I don't even know if it's a painting but it's that big drawing of like there's like eight guys next to each other with the masks okay and then they start bleeding out of their mouth and their eyes and, and it's just like creepy visual um and then she goes back to doing drugs actually she actually does yeah, yeah. and then uh the coven of you know the three women they take her under their wings and then uh, this is where we get like a really epic and artful possession scene where she like pretty much I told Jay if like anyone's familiar with Catholicism it's like an unholy Fatima it's her like saying yes to Satan and like allowing the devil to like give her a baby pretty much yeah and I, one thing I wanted to point out too is like I don't know if I pointed this out during the movie or not but I just thought it was so weird how like you know, she's feeling all bad and stuff. And before, she's kind of creeped out by the three ladies. Uh-huh. But, you know, um, when she has the second vision or whatever, when the music's playing in the radio station and she goes home, the three old ladies kind of come up there and they're like, oh, do you want us to join you? And she's kind of like, yeah, actually. Like, it's like, why would you be okay the second time? Unless she's yeah. already under the spell or Maybe something. Maybe it's just because she's so high, too. Like, oh, she okay. She smoked the crack. So yeah. Like, yeah. Gotcha. Um, and he says she just smoked the crack. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we get the weird like puppet abortion fetus devil thing yeah that's like I don't even know how to describe it pretty pretty nasty um, that's pretty weird yeah <clears throat> like a lobster monster and then this is another instance where zombie takes us into the abstract but then he pulls us right back into schlock because we get this really abstract like like I said artistic scene yes and then we get this like bleh, like we get this creepy like gross like in your face part where she's holding the tentacles and it's like screaming at her. And this is after he just gets done showing us this beautiful like entrance to like the palace of hell. And he like, slows it down. And, yeah, thing. like he makes it really like like I said like, like The Shining. Yes. Like you and I both were like this is totally out of The Shining. So it's just 
it's I think it really is like the music video mentality just like bleeding into into yeah. his director style you know and it kind of sucks but um and then let me see oh yeah so then Francis goes to talk with Heidi and then he meets the landlady and well, he meets her already yeah they lie they lie to him about <laughs> Heidi being gone and then um this is where we pretty much agreed that like the Dr. Francis character was the most likable of the yeah. movie. It's like the most tragic that he had to die. He was um, just so happy go lucky, like Yeah, like he was just such a cool guy. <clears throat> um but it's just really funny how he reacts to the women and how the one is like, What are you laughing at? I'm not Yeah, when it got right. so when you straight up knew the murder was about to happen. <laughs> like literally, as soon as she says like, What are you laughing about? But yeah, you yeah. know You know something's about to go down. Yeah. So then, yeah, Heidi overhears uh, Sonny D. Wallace uh, murdering Francis, and then this is where Whitey shows up, and uh, one of the witches tells uh, Whitey, take care of Heidi. She means the world to us. And then, yeah, you and I are both were like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, that's, that's not on the nose at all. <laughs> but then it's really weird. Like, we go to this scene, and Heidi's laying on her couch, but her, like, boxers are pulled down. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just supposed to be, like, they literally had sex. But, like, who did what? she have sex with? Yeah. Like, what? Um, but then we get the really creepy theater at the end, uh, where all the women have gone that were, like, lulled by the music or whatever. And you were, like, uh... No, I banda from uh, Mulholland yeah, from, Drive. From, yeah. So like, yeah, it's it, it had kind of that feel to it, but it was a little bit more like opera y, like it was a little bit more grand than that theater. But it, it had that same kind of like droning feel to it. Big time. And then, oh yeah, it's really creepy how she just like says bye to the two guys. Like they're sitting there like stressed out about her and like arguing, and she's just like bye, yeah. and she just leaves, and the door closes. And then uh, the really grandeur music comes back, and uh, Heidi's like walking up to the stage and all that. And then yeah, the final summoning is really creepy, but it has almost like a parody feel to it yeah. of like Christian of Christ things, again, yeah. which it, it is like offensive in a way. I guess you could see it as being offensive, but to me, I see it as like tying it to the theme of Satanism and like yeah, malicious Satanism, not like the Wiccan Satanism. And um, yeah, and what I was saying too is just like it's kind of I feel like I don't know it's just kind of schlocky nowadays to do the whole like ah this is what Christianity is but we're doing the opposite so right. this is evil and creepy now it's right. like uh, yeah um and then yeah you and I both noticed that he loves the phrase in between your legs in between your legs yeah and I and I I just thought I'd say lazy phrazy yeah because like yeah the, the, it's just like. Say something else, dude. Like you said it once already. I don't know. And then yeah, the old school instruments the witches use are pretty creepy. Yeah, on they were stage. Cool. That added to like the little archaic feel of the gave, witches. Gave me some pirate vibes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we get a hallway full of obese old naked women with pig masks, and then also the ash face pope in the middle of all the naked women. Yeah. See, there it goes again. Well, yeah. That's what I mean. Like it, you could take it as like. Oh, he's just trying to offend, but it's also like, well, or he's just mocking Christianity because that's what Satanists what would Satanist do. What Satanists would do. So it's like, eh. Yeah. Um, so then we get, yeah, the 70s trip thing. It gets really experimental. Oh, and yeah. Like crazy. <laughs> and just makes you think you're losing your mind. Um, and then... So the music video uh, montage, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we almost get like a satanic nativity here. Yeah. Um, and, and like Christ forgive me for saying that but like pretty much it, it's like the evil equivalent of you know that um, with her like laying on the rock and the blood coming down and stuff and like all the witches gathered around her were kind of like the wise men and the shepherds and stuff that's that's just the vibe I was getting this time watching it um, and then probably one of the best shots in the movie is the last shot of uh Heidi, and she's kind of, like, gained her full power as, like, the mother of Satan. Yeah. And so she's, like, a... She's, like, a reverse Mother Mary. Yeah. You know? 
She's wearing like the instead she's of got like the, the all white she's wearing, eyes. Like, the red robe yeah, and, and she's got like the all white eyes. It reminds me a lot of Evil Dead. Like, yeah. I gotta say, one of one of the coolest parts to me about the movie was definitely the ending, where it's like, oh, thirty-two bodies were found in the in the memorial. That was like like so the real cool. world after the real world aftermath. Of, yeah, I don't know cool. why that always those always get me like. That's yeah, cool. It makes you, I guess yeah. it makes it feel more real. More real, yeah. You know it I mean? makes it feel like it was historical and like it happened. Man, it makes it. I don't know why, but it just gave me a feel of like, man, what if this happened in our town? Like, you just find <laughs> yeah. thirty two dead women. Like that's fucking insane. Like hell yeah. And then like how she's still missing. Like yeah, and she was just missing. Just like missing. They, yeah, she wasn't one of the bodies. Like she wasn't there at yeah. all. So it's like, where the hell did she go? Yeah, where the hell did she go? Um, <laughs> yeah. Where where in the hell did she go? Yeah. So, I mean, thoughts and comments, you know, last uh, assessment. Um, yeah, I think... Favorite character? Favorite character, I gotta say Francis. The, the professor yeah, the guy, professor. I love him too. I just love how they were giving him shit, and then he's just, like, laughing about it. Like, yeah, like, cause he, he too he's kind of like getting nervous, shit. you yeah. know, and, like, it's just funny. He reacts like a real person. Yeah, he's just like... I love the other author <laughs> guy that he goes to. It's like, this is all bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like, like get this. <laughs> she said the woman's gonna be a vessel. He starts, like, cracking up. Yeah, yeah. dude, he's, like, like, laughing as laughing he's him. saying it. It's so funny. Francis plays it really good, too. He's like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is just bullshit. What was the... Where's where does he live? Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah. Um, favorite scene or favorite like visual? Favorite visual. I have to say the uh, the levitating cross scene. Okay, the, yeah, the yeah. Bigfoot saying the that, red cross. Man. So like the shot, the first shot of him standing there. Yeah, the like, first one. It is pretty like, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty creepy. Other than that, like I said, that ending. I don't know why. Where it's like that two bodies were found. Like that ending is just so yeah. cool. Like I love the the Iron Maiden type thing that's hanging oh and in in the bedroom yeah i like that but they like i said they got too in your face with it like they should have left it like hereditary did they should have left it in the dark (laughs) and just kind of like and i don't mean to like just throw out a movie like that but but yeah lords of salem was fun um it's a good like like i said creepy movie it'll get you in the fall mood yeah it will um for sure and this is definitely a good contender for like top like fall horror movies because it's fall in the movie too. big time so you get a f- you know the the atmosphere of fall. this is droning fall though this isn't like you're oh well, yeah some pumpkin spot you know no no, I mean? no this, this is, is not yeah. this is not fun it's creepy, yeah, fall, this is creepy sure. fall so would you recommend it to like your average person uh my average person shit i think i would i would recommend it to a horror movie lover you know okay what I mean? just, just someone to looking give, for, give a them, movie. for a creepy movie and it'll yeah. get them off of the like you know the because you know how there's like basic horror movies, yeah, yeah. and the to, get, to give them something fresh. Yeah, you know I mean definitely. Yeah, I definitely would too. I, I think anyone, anyone that digs Rob Zombie, anyone that likes horror, and anyone that likes abstract stuff, because like Zombie does get abstract. He just sometimes he is like hit or miss with it. Hit or miss, right? So, but yeah. And again, visually, it's like an awesome movie. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, the visuals, you can never fault Zombie's visuals. He's always, like, he's spot on with yeah, what his movies look like. So, Thank you guys for listening. Um, we're, this is uh, part one of a 10 or 11 part series uh, of our October Horror Fest. So come back for the next one. We're going to keep doing these movies. I'm going to have other people, and it might just be me. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great day, and happy Halloween.